Music for this episode of About to Break is provided by Cat Beach Music. Whether you're looking to score an entire film or just need to find the perfect vibe for your next commercial project, our friends Bobby and Jen Hartree have what you're looking for. Check them out today at catbeachmusic.com. Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 79 of the About to Break podcast. I am so excited about this episode. Now, I know one of the dangers of being a person who's very easily excited is I say I'm very excited about this episode and you say, well, you say that every week, Taylor. The truth is I'm very, very excited about this episode. I just left right now from recording uh, with Jamie Flam and Vanessa Raglin of the Dynasty Typewriter, which is not only one of the newest, most exciting venues in LA, but is a place that, as we talk about in this podcast, is so infused with wonder and enchantment. I'm just on cloud nine after our conversation. You know, there's that weird thing in life when you're going to have a meeting with someone and it's not someone you know, you know of them, or maybe they know of you, or maybe you don't know each other very well at all. And, and there's all these things racing through your head like, oh, I wonder I wonder how this is going to go. I'm telling you, this little bit of time that I just spent with Jamie and Vanessa, it was so encouraging and exhilarating. They just shared so much of themselves on this episode and their love for performers and for creating a space that matters. And you're going to freaking love it. Jamie spent years at the Hollywood Improv as their booker and uh, putting together the shows there. Uh, with huge success, really built up the improv here in Hollywood to something pretty fantastic. Vanessa has spent years at Groundlings and is a writer and a performer, and uh, they've been writing buddies and friends for like 12 years, and they just launched Dynasty Typewriter six months ago, and it's such a fun venue, guys. Go check it out. Uh, If you're around L.A. this weekend and you're going to be at the Magic Castle, I will be there as well. I'm performing uh, the next four days there. Uh, in the Peller with my buddy Jimmy H. We're doing shows at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11.30, and we're really excited. we got a fun new show, uh, different stuff than you've seen us do before, so come check that out. Next week, I'll be at the Queen Mary doing some uh, some magic at the Queen Mary on July 4th for their Independence Day celebration. Come say hey, and then again, July 7th, we start our Magic on Tap series in my hometown of Upland, California. And I'm so looking forward to those shows we've got on July 7th. I've got Dana Daniels performing. Uh, I'll be there performing as well, but Dana's headlining that day. On July 14th, Chipper Lowell is headlining. And then on July 21st, uh, I'm going to be doing my, my show there. And uh, that one's almost sold out. Uh, as of this recording, we only have four tickets left to that uh, and, and a handful of tickets to the other. So go to Magic on Tap right now to get tickets for that. Um, and I hope to see you there. The rest of the month, let's see, July 11th and July 18th, I'll be performing at Scott Neary's Booby Trap. Uh, always a great show, always a good time. And then uh, the end of the month, July 26th, I head to Branson, Missouri to perform at the Silver Dollar City Cas- not Casino. <laughs> Branson doesn't have casinos. Uh, what's the opposite of a casino? Uh, like a theme park. That's where that's where I'll be at. Anyway, guys, you can uh, get info and tickets to all those at taylorhughes.com forward slash live. But enough gabbing. I know I said it a lot and I'll say it again. I stinking love Jamie and Vanessa and I love Dynasty Typewriter. Go check it out. You'll be so glad you did. Sit back, relax, and enjoy episode 79 of the About to Break podcast, my conversation with Jamie Flam and Vanessa Raglan. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Something is about to break. Hey everybody, welcome to About to Break. I'm your host, Taylor Hughes, and I am sitting down right now with a wonderful team from Dynasty Typewriter. It's Jamie Flam and Vanessa Raglan, everybody. Hi. What up? Thank you guys yeah, for doing up? this. Thanks for having for ha- us. Thank you for having me oh, in your yeah. home. And We're is... in the Enclave. We used to do a podcast here and we called it the Enchanted Enclave. Yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Is it still in, in the ether? Is it still out there? or The, the podcast? Yeah. yeah. Can you get to it still? I don't know still? if it is. I don't know. It was on the yeah. SoundCloud, uh, <laughs> Libsyn, one of those iTunes, but 
I don't think it exists anymore. Okay. It's not that you don't have like some random Libsyn payment coming out of your credit card. I probably do. Yeah. 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 So many of those. It's like a gym subscription for Mm -hmm. entertainers. Good times. Oh, right. Good analogy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I, uh, you just used the word enchanting earlier Mm -hmm. and I, I, it reminded me of when I first reached out, um, I shot Jamie a message on like your, your bio on the dynasty page. It's talked about like enchantment and wonder. Oh, and I was sure. just like, I'm in, Aww. I'm so in. Cause you know, being a magician, like oh, that's the sure. thing that I'm, that's what keeps me in a dorky, you know, world of magic is like, we don't get Santa Claus moments as adults. And I swear when I walked into dynasty the other day, I was like, this is it. Aww, it feels, thanks. well, we're just 10% if that of the way towards our ultimate goal of it being like Disneyland or the magic castle yes. or the places that I think were so Madonna formative Inn. for us, Madonna and all the kitschy magical places right. where it's like, you can tell that they have been curated out of someone's like specific love and taste for what someone's oh, yeah. experience is going to be. Yeah. The night. So I was there for Moses's show and oh, yeah. that was when you guys, I think, I guess you just first had this, like the, the wall flickering sconces. Lights. The flickering lights. Yes. And when that came on, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> we need more flicker I, candles. Uh, that's, I think the the key is flicker candle that's, lights yes. and I think just music in general. And as we found, um, smoke machine. Oh yeah. Smoke machine does a lot of heavy lifting. For yeah. Mood. My buddy who came with me, I was like, dude, that little guy smoke machine makes a huge difference right? in this space. Like, yeah. because it builds anticipation. You walk in yeah. and you're like, something good is going to happen. What's going on? Which, yeah. which oddly in comedy is rare because you know, there's, there's great comedy everywhere, but so often it's the, whatever the act or the performer is what it's all put on. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the atmosphere is just the dumpiest, uninviting yeah. so it's very it was very cool to walk in and be like oh this place is like built around comedy and variety and music and it's like it really feels magical but the experience we believe wholeheartedly begins the moment you walk in yeah and so that translates to our staff to um every interaction everywhere you look and that's yeah. why i said we we're 10 percent of the way there and luckily we moved into this building where it didn't take a lot because it's it's, it's built in 1926 yeah. oh yeah um it's already got all these historical flourishes and beautiful things and you can't help but feel like you're in a different world just walking in um but our vision for what we want to have on the mm -hmm. walls and um the way we want to transform it for different seasons like it's so much bigger than what we're able to do so far but it's so it's like forever evolving it's not like okay we're gonna you know we're gonna put this painting up and we're gonna have this there and then that's it yeah and it's fun with organic um discovery yeah um and you know, so much of the stuff has been donated, like just random beautiful pieces of furniture. Oh, just magically, come in. Oh, we my have goodness, like yeah. in- inherited all these things that are like per- we- they have the perfect spots. Like find something by the street. That's the perfect thing. It's been yeah. really like a dreamy, like a kids book, like Stone Soup or something, where it's like everybody's yes. bringing something, and then right. you have a beautiful place. It's so rad. I I was even looking at like um, so that night. And you've used them for several events, but like the desk and like the... Oh, yeah. It's like, I love how unpractical. (laughs) I love this giant armoire that's just gorgeous. Which was literally put there just as a a holding place. Yeah. Um, We're like, oh, we'll just store this on stage. But then it just became part of the... It's beautiful. And and, in part just because it's really hard to move. Yeah. So happy. (laughs) Throw some candles on it. Yeah. Hey, it's intentional now. For people who haven't gone, I mean, even even at the opening, like, so the curtain was open and then it closed and then you guys came up and, like, welcomed the audience and I was like, this is like a... This is different than every other LA show. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It really felt like um, reminiscent to me of like what you hear about like parlor magic and like people would come into the living room and it's like, welcome to our home. Here's what we're going to do together. That's and just that's said, our whole vision. That's it, yeah. It's like, you know, for a while we were playing with the idea of, and we still might, but it's like, come hang out this weekend. Like, yeah. come into our house. Uh, yes. This is the stuff that we love and we want to share it with you. And that's that's the Mom's aesthetic. making snacks. Come over. Right? Stay yeah. Stay late. Yeah. Oh man. So, so how long has this, I mean, obviously you guys have been in entertainment for most of your life and done so many different aspects of it. What, when did this idea become a thing where you're like, I think we could actually do this? I think, I mean, the, the, it was born, I mean, Vanessa and I met at the West Side Eclectic in 2006, which was 
and it still exists it's the west side comedy theater but it was a, a brand new little black box in alley in santa monica yeah and i was the first employee just you know make this theater work wow and i learned everything and then Vanessa was the first person hired. I was the first intern. I, I had just moved to LA. Okay. And um, I was Where did you move from? At that point, I moved from North Carolina and I wasn't planning on doing anything in entertainment. Um, but I got like, I was going to write and okay. write poems. <laughs> yes. And I got bored within a week and applied for this internship. And Jamie was my first friend in LA. But we, um, yeah. And then I got hired there. And that was like the beginning of just a real sort of. Dare I say, simpatico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we just hit it off. and But I think as soon as I started there, just the idea of a space yeah. and all the things you could do with it, yeah. that's when it was born. Mm. And, um, and you know, building the confidence like, oh, if I could do this on my own. Yeah. And then I ended up at the Improv in 2011 right? Yeah. and was there for six years. And so it continued is like, I think always uh, underline everything was like, if I could have complete control. Yeah. And so Vanessa, we've been writing shows and p producing things for years, and just it was always in the ether of like, if we had our own space, if we had our own space. Mm -hmm. And so, I think it was 2013 we found this, we found the Hayworth. Yeah, and um, it's a long, com convoluted story, but we did two big benefit shows there that were dreamy by our so standards. Magical, yeah. yeah, and this was before the building had been redone, so okay. it was it was still gorgeous in there. It didn't like quite look like it looks now, but we yeah. had a big huge band. We this had, was like, like a, it was almost like a marathon of a show, right? Like wasn't it a, a, over a like a long period of time? Oh, oh we right had now? a Kickstarter that was long. That's what it was. Um, okay, but we yeah, this was just like six years ago. We did these two big huge benefits that yeah. like we did. We had the luxury too because we weren't having to run the space at that time so we mm -hmm. could put all of our energy into making those shows so we had like a cigarette girl handing out candy at the front we had like we had time to do all these little details right. and um yeah, we the, fell in love with the space totally and that at that point you know i put the first touches on a, a business plan because yeah. it, the the building was semi-available um and ultimately needed millions of dollars of work and we didn't have millions were of they dollars. at the time mm -hmm. were they just doing like one nighters there like special event kind of stuff or like they would do like runs of plays or musicals that would come in there was yeah. no curation it was just Everyone like was just a space for rent yeah, yeah, yeah exactly okay. uh but yeah so it wasn't meant to be i know yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> keeps coming up now. Yeah. unfortunately <laughs> i know that word <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do a four wall, right? A yeah. week long four wall. I think any producer, yeah, should know. Yeah, oh yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and also it's like you know we believe um, in the universe and timing and all these things, and it just wasn't the right time. And I had just I was only still only three years in at the improv, yeah, and really needed the next four years to come into my own as a booker and producer, and right. so. Organically, I was pregnant yeah. at that time too. Oh, that's true. So it was like was now the, your first. Yeah. So now I have a four-year-old, which yeah. is much better timing for like. Right. That. But also, I, I've always Jamie and I've been writing partners and podcasts and produced all these shows. But I was more leery about a venue always, because I'm like I don't want to deal with plumbing. Right. I don't want to deal with, you know, all these things. Yeah. And I've been totally surprised. I love the idea of control mm -hmm. <laughs> and a space to make magical. But I've been so surprised at how like deeply rewarding it is especially in the arts to have a a center yeah for something you want to do and the little stuff like pales in comparison like those frustrations pale in comparison to the payoff of like creating a space that you can see people enjoy like that mm -hmm. is very rewarding that's so cool. and so here we are <laughs> oh, so is. in the meantime the building was bought okay the millions of dollars were put in yeah and then about two years ago randomly with new owners, it just kind of fell back into our lap. So in that time, were you like, oh, we, it, that's not going to work out? They Looked at different spaces. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. At one point, I mean, we fully negotiated a lease for another space. Yeah. Um, which, again, is like at the time, it was the most stressful, yeah. painful thing. And we lost a little money. Um, but you look back and it, it forced the next iteration of the business plan. Um, so everything was just primed yeah. for when this came. Also taught, what do you want in a space? Like, right. I feel like that was a huge lesson that you don't okay. know until yeah. you're looking at one. I mean, it's like buying a house or anything right. where it's like you don't really know what you want until you're like physically trying to plan. How could I make this work for a show? And right. so the Hayworth 
already had all the things that we wanted to do to the other building. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's so cool. Was it crazy going back in there after, because you guys had been in there doing shows when it wasn't renovated, and then well, going back afterward, we were like, oh. No, actually, we signed the lease before. Before you had seen the. It just hadn't been done. So we were okay. going back and forth, and then it was finally renovated right before we moved in. And so we were watching it as yeah. it was happening. Oh, that's so cool. And it was really cool to see. That's incredible. And it was, yeah. That's not good. <laughs> I'll edit this out. Which sounds so no, no, brilliant. keep it in. Keep it in. Organic. Keep all this real, all man. All stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you get this idea. You're, you're going to create a space that is indicative of wonder and enchantment and creates this atmosphere. I've heard people say they want to do that before. Like when I saw the Kickstarter, I'm like, this is great. I hope it happens. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like Because... A lot of times it's like, um, you know, the over-promise, under-deliver. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you were mentioning earlier is is you want to over-deliver. You want people to go. Absolutely. Like, I, I bought a ticket and I was like, 10 bucks? It's only 10 bucks to the mm -hmm. show? And I went to the show and then it was like, I really can't believe this is a $10 show. Should like, have been 20 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to work on that. Right. You get you could have like an opportunity to pay again as they leave. Oh yeah, yeah that's a good right? idea. Yeah. You like it? It was pay worth again. more. There you go. Yeah. Well, we are trying to build premium experiences that right. are, you know, people. I think especially in comedy, in this day and age, people are so used to a five dollar ticket, a free show. Right. Um, but like you said too, a lot of the places aren't. You know, uh, the value is in the show itself, and, and in LA, two people are just working on material, so that that's another reason why tickets are so cheap. But we're trying to bring the value back. Right. And yeah. toe the line between, uh, you know, an audience for an art form that mm -hmm. is not necessarily used to paying a lot right. um, and bridge that gap with people that are for more theatrical experience. But again, we're not, we're, it's not about necessarily about the talent that we're, it's about the, the full on experience. Right. We and want, yeah. curating a really special experience. So using talent that people know, they've right. never heard of, putting it together in a way that like makes it unforgettable because... You can see anybody's set anymore online right, yeah. in a million places. Oh, yeah. You can see your favorite comic for five bucks. Another thing that is that we've talked about is like for more expensive tickets, because I do think tickets should often be more expensive because we believe artists should be paid. Mm -hmm. right. So it's like valuing art in a different way. Which in way. LA is not a thing, really. Right. I mean, most of the time, it doesn't ever happen. Exactly. You know? So it's trying to create something special enough that right. there's a way for everyone to be appreciated. And when people are saying like, I want my show, my, a producer says they want right. their show to be $5 or something. Yeah. Um, they don't even bring as many people as someone that with a higher ticket, right. like someone works harder for yep. a higher ticket price. Everyone feels valued because mm -hmm. we believe they are valuable. So like trying to make the space reflect that our attitudes and conversations are like reflect that. Right. And, um, to paint the whole picture that, we appreciate art mm -hmm. in all its forms. We appreciate experience and that it it's worth something, truly worth something, you know? Yeah. I think, um, you know, you guys open, you're what, six months in now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Like if, when you look at, because you guys announced the the season that's yeah. coming up, which you just look at that list of shows and performers and it's mind blowing. It's like. I mean, we're pinching ourselves for sure. I, I mean, I, I'm just sitting there going like, I mean, I've been in SoCal my whole life and it's like this many great people in this place is phenomenal. And then to look back over the last six months and to see all the things that have already happened. Yeah. Is, it's insane. I mean, we, we are <laughs> literally that. that's, yeah. pinching ourselves constantly. Like, obviously we had the audacity yeah, um, right? to open a theater in LA. Right. Um, and I look back, I'm like, why, how did we have that confidence? Yeah. Um, With really looking back, minimal plans in place. Right, I mean, right. truly like Dreams. vision, yeah. very yeah. clear, big vision. I mean, I think one of our um, weaknesses that can also maybe be a strength at some point if it works out, but is we are often better at the big picture than the small picture. So okay. like our dreams for what we want the space to become and the, for lack of a better word, brand, but honestly, like what, right. what comes from it, all the different materials that can come from this is so much bigger than a theater space. Right. want to make something really special, but yeah, it, it, magically we started having shows that were like, Oh, I'm really glad that's happening. Right? That's wonderful. Well, I, think yeah. we, I mean, part of the process for me, I think for both of us, but was, you know, light pitching this venue yeah. through the process too with people we looked up to. And the, the response was always like, you should do that. I support yeah. that. Yeah. And then obviously through the Kickstarter, we saw the community rally and a lot of our artists that we love contributed. But um, 
Yeah, I, I never doubted that we would have great shows and big names. I never, but it, the fact that in six months you look at this list that it happened that quickly, right? Still, such a long way to go. I want to make that clear, but like, no, it is. I mean, it's. I think that there's a gap between like perception and reality, but the middle point is that we're having people we admire on the stage every week so like cool. every week people that it's like i would i would pay to see this show right, right. i haven't yet seen something in the theater that i've been like eh. mm -hmm. it's i feel like we're really we've been really lucky um yeah there's been like so many shows like how i mean our, i how think is this here? in our second month or it was like adam sandler yeah a hero like doing five shows it's crazy um and like, how do we top that? And like then, it has like his residency. Well, and it was, <laughs> that one felt even more special because that was not his intention at first. Like it grew out of like, that one was good. Can Let's we do, do a lot more? Wow. And so that felt like we were really kind of finding yeah. our legs in terms of yep. um, making everybody feel good. We have a good team, a, t a small and good team. Um, but yeah, it's, it's but there's been like Every week there's something that somehow tops the... Yeah, because yeah, you're like, how how are we gonna? You know, we've peaked in our first month. Right, <laughs> right. Know? But those little things, like it is, like just putting a little flicker lights, right, and that combined with this new show, or like, you know, I had no relationship with with drag, mm -hmm. but Jinx Monsoon, who was a winner of uh, uh, Drag Race, yeah. yeah, yeah, we booked it, you know, months and months ago without even thinking about it. It was like, oh, they have a one big of the following. first things we booked, yeah, right, and it was we were blown away by the show, and then we did our own. Um, dynasty divas of dynasty drag night and so it's like a whole new world works like exploring like yeah. this is magical and i never even expected that right yeah and we've had musicals i mean it is um it's awesome to be like standing in the back of the room and it feels like all these new shows with different energies transform the space themselves it's mm. like this is different yeah. because we have a big stage to work with and right. we have oh, yeah. nice lights so it's and like actual curtains right it affords <laughs> more than a comedy venue yeah. does you know a typical comedy venue it feels like uh yeah it does i like i feel like it's nostalgic i'm like oh yeah a show a we put on show. shows yeah yes and that's the the standard by which we're now booking right. and we're just we're evolving very quickly in what we're looking for um and, and the level of commitment and professionalism right we're demanding from anyone that wants to produce stuff there. and vision too like we mm. want a person we don't there are plenty of shows with right. great lineups all over town, like we've said. But like, if you want to do a show that's just a bunch of stand-up comedians, it's kind of not enough, right? Because it needs to have a passionate vision behind it. And like on our show submission form, which if anybody wants to submit a show, it's on our website, yeah. DynastyTypewriter.com, on the FAQ section. Um, <laughs> uh, backslash we'll, we'll show. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but we ask questions like, how do you want the audience to feel after your show? Yes. Um, because that matters, you know, and that right? that shows you what a person's thought process is. Because there's enough shows for people to go up on. So why is your show different, and why well, is it special? And things like that, I feel empower producers. Yeah. And, because a lot of times we don't know when we're starting out to ask these kind of questions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, well, I want to get on stage and I want to say this stuff, and it's like, but like you said, what do you want them to leave with? Yeah. When they walk out and they give their one sentence, this is what the show was you've got to reverse engineer that into what you're putting on stage. Yeah. You know? And we've had a lot of people, and this is stuff that's been developing over the years from the West side and improv too, is like, right. um, yeah, so many people just put on shows just for the sake of putting on a show yeah. or cause that's what they think they're supposed to do for their career. Right. And a lot of times they, the, they feel they want to do it again for stage time. But, um, I was so inspired when I was started asking myself those questions and um but we've already seen shows that have transformed from their initial pitch to you know two weeks later they've really rethought it and resubmit it and it's like mm. an entirely different show and they're much more driven they're excited. And motivated. right yeah, like we're like what's your dream show do your dream yeah. show and also i and little things that jamie says really stick with me but um very simple when somebody wants to do a monthly show say why does it need to be monthly right and that's like like, Such oh. a small question to right. ask because it seems like, well, it should be monthly. And then you sort of stop in your tracks and think, you know, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it could eventually deserve to be monthly. Right. And there's maybe some merit in like building a crowd and things like that. But that's only really if you do have a vision for what you want this to be and what you're giving the audience. Because yeah. otherwise it's just a, a stage with a mic on it, you know, right. and that exists already. Yeah. There's so many monthly and weekly shows in L.A. and there's so few of them 
can sustain a right. regular audience. And we'd much rather have one big show that you put your everything into yep. um, than to have a monthly show and you have X number of people and then that goes down and then it's up. So then you're... Um, it's build the calling card of your big show right. and then people will want to see it again. And then you'll cultivate an audience yeah. that could sustain a bigger thing, but leave people, give them something special that they would want to come back to yeah, and gotta, then give yourself gotta... time to do it again properly, you know? I hope you're enjoying this episode of the About to Break podcast. Three quick ways that you can help us out here at About to Break. The first one is to go on iTunes and leave us a review. Uh, if you enjoy the program, please leave us a five-star review. Big thank you to everyone who's already done that. If you haven't yet, please jump over to iTunes. You'll need your iTunes account information. Uh, but you can click on the podcast, leave us a five-star review. Just leave us a one or two sentence little blurb there. Let people know what you like about it. That helps us out huge. Second way you can help us at about to break is by becoming a producer. Uh, our goal is to have a thousand people given at least a buck a month to help offset the cost of producing these shows. And it does take time. And uh, it is a passion project. I will continue putting these out for free because I think it's a helpful conversation. Uh, but anything you can do to help us out by producing the show would be awesome. Go over to abouttobreakpodcast.com, click on become a producer, and see what that's all about. Last thing that you can do, and this one is also a real, a real simple way of making a difference, is just sharing the podcast. All right. When you see it out there on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, go ahead and follow along and then share it with your friends. Let someone else know how much you liked it because it sure does make a difference. All right. Back to the program. It, I mean, it goes back to the fact that everything is online. Everybody's yes. sets are online. Every, you know, you, so if it's just about seeing a performance or hearing a joke, you can get that anywhere. Right. But it's that it is that space and it's that magical feeling have you guys ever been to brookledge oh yes yes, have yes. You been? oh my yeah, gosh we have. so when oh it's so magical oh my gosh so when i walked in your theater i was like they're doing a brookledge but oh like, but that's but a high compliment accessible do you know what i'm saying like i i grew up um in the magic castle when i was a kid i was a teenager was oh in you like were the, the junior group you know do they you know like, andrew delman Yes, I know yeah. Andrew. Yeah, yeah, we I can, know him too. We all know him. Yeah. He's a good guy, man. We did we did a show in Chino Hills. Not, Whoa, not name to, dropping. Not to boast, but uh. he was a junior magician. Too. Yes, That's what I was <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was he's slightly younger than me, but but yeah. I was, so I was in the junior group, and they took us for the first time to. It's for those of you who don't know, it's the house that the founders of the Magic Castle. Their family still lives there. And before there was ever a magic castle, they built this theater. Then it goes over a brook in the backyard, and it's Ugh. you. I walked in there as Brooklyn. a kid. Ledge. Oh, <laughs> oh, I get oh, it that's now. That's how they did. It. <laughs> but I walked in there as a kid, and I was like, "Oh my goodness! Like, I can't believe this exists." Yep. That's that's the that's feeling, feeling that I think we always that we connect to that we yeah. want everyone to connect to. Yeah. Oh my! Like, and it's, that comes out back to curation too. It's like. Mm -hmm. This when I walk into a place and there's like a mix playing and it's like a more obscure song, I'm like, they're playing this just for me, right? Yeah. And we want everyone to feel that yeah. every single thing is for them, and we've thought about it. And yeah. those details, I mean, I I do love the Madonna, and there's tons of places from childhood that that like get that same feeling. But to look around there, you feel like everywhere you see, they do not need to put something, but right. someone cared enough to put that there because they love it and right. they want you to see it. And that feels so neat to be, you're like in someone's heart yeah. when you walk through a space like that. And to try to bring ours to life is really exciting to like give, to share the magic, right? Like to share the things that light you up because you know, it's going to make someone else feel special. When I, so my buddy Steve was laughing at me because I kept being like, look how they put the set, the, the set list of performers on the typewriter. Oh That's yeah. Look, look how they, you know, classic swap, get a sticker. If you do, your oh, email. Yeah. it's like, how many people are asking every day for your email address? Right. And it's something we have to do for business. And yeah. it's like, now it's a game. Now yeah. It's you know what I mean? It's like, I feel like, and, and again, maybe it's because we just had Nerd Melt shut down. Yeah. We just had Steve uh, Allen, right? iOS. Like all Send these places are, I feel like performers are so right now we need, and not just performers, but fans of entertainment and mm -hmm. comedy. We need places to play. And I feel like you guys are creating that. You're like the kids at school where uh -huh. everyone's like, can we go to their house after school? <laughs> like, and we're like, yeah, we got, we got but we're going to make you listen to stuff. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm totally like geeking out a little bit. I'm just so grateful that somebody is passionate about the experience. And, and you know, we use 
curation is an LA word. Everyone says yeah. they're curating a show. It's like, well, I saw that same show three days ago at this yeah. venue, you know, but it, it's pretty wonderful what you guys are doing. Hey, thanks. So are there, moving. are there any, uh, spoilers as far as, cause you say you're like 10%. Is there anything that's like just a little taste of here's something we want to do that we're going to add? Or, well, or is it... a broad spoiler is yeah. dynasty. The name, it, um, is like an imaginary family. <laughs> uh, but we're creating the lore for this whole family that goes back generations. And that's going to be more and more incorporated into the space and in, into other projects that we do, both like written and on stage. Okay. So we have lots of characters in a universe that we're so excited to introduce people to. Yeah, like we came out the gates, Dynasty typewriter, um, without even any typewriters in the space right. for the first five months. Mm -hmm. So just adding typewriters in the last uh, few weeks has been a, a, a part of it. But we do have a, a, it's a, this amazingly huge universe that we've been developing really for since we've met yeah. for 12 years. Um, but the next big phase and um, Harmontown, the podcast just yeah. came in for a Monday night residency awesome. for it's great. ongoing, but they do a live, um, live stream every Monday. Yeah. And so now we're slowly building up our own, um, in-house gear so that we can produce because ultimately oh, cool. we have this space but we want it to be as expansive and accessible to the rest of the world and just yeah. a portal to all the other things that we want to do yeah. i mean i think that's the big idea and that's mm -hmm. kind of what i meant when i said brand earlier like dynasty typewriter should just be a portal into another universe it shouldn't just mm. be what's happening on that stage yeah so we're using that to you know it is it's a, a meeting ground um for the best talent places where we can develop ideas, develop relationships, develop um, talent um, and develop shows that yeah. can exist there, that can exist, uh, you know, through podcasting, through live streaming, through television shows and movies and theme and parks. And traveling and yeah, all the things. Theme Mostly parks. theme. I mean, that's the biggest spoiler. Theme parks? <laughs> we will have a theme park at some point. <laughs> what? Well, in a way, we kind of already Talk do. Talk about that now. <laughs> I think that's as much info <laughs> as we have. <laughs> and we're turning this off. Got, yeah. I never thought of it that way. We kind of already do have the theme park. Yeah. We really want to get more like recordings in places like where I'm the ghost of so and so, like when you go in the bathroom and stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, like a whole, it's a whole immersive experience. Yeah. Well, we talked yes. about um, your spoiler that you kind of got when you're waiting for us to finish our meeting, but you know, we want there to be a month long Halloween and whether it's this year or next where yeah. we can transform the space. And part of our, our, strategy has been seasonal programming so right now we're, it's our first season yeah um but the excitement of each season can have its own vibe its own lore its own um decor right and as we grow and um hopefully make more money too like we'll have more resources that we're like we can transform the space so that for the spring season 2019 it's um going to be uh, our own ice cream factory which made that up uh but we want to publish. I mean, yeah. we have a lot of things that maybe don't make on paper business sense at all, but I think that really will add to the magic of it. And yeah. it's, I think the reason that thus far, I mean, in combined with just luck and relationships that we've had so many great performers that also want to come back is because artists want to play and they're excited about it. So right. instead of going to a place where there's a guy in an office that's like typing it up that made the deal, it's, it's people that truly care and yeah. are like both fans and, and peers in terms of like creating something yeah. that they want to let people in on. And like, if you're in comedy or if you're in performance, you want to tell stories and you want to hang out mm -hmm. with people that want to tell stories. So to create a world where those people can like really, we can work with each other in an organic and like really joyful way there. That's not something that we're looking at a bottom line, but it, right. it adds to again, the worth of everything. Like then you should pay for a ticket because the right. artists are worth it and the yeah. stories are worth it. And those are things that are, more valuable than what you're getting, you know, when you go to dinner. Right. Um, no slam to cooks. I love dinner. But you know what I mean. Like, right. it's thinking of what no you're... slam to cooks. <laughs> right. I don't, don't want to anger the cook community. And <laughs> chefs. Uh, big fan of you, you a lot of your work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spin in my food. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, I think yeah. that... Um, a lot of people don't want to spend money. They, I, I can't spend $20 for a show. And because it's like, we're entertained but for spend... free. Like we've been right. now really spoiled to all the, anything you could want is at your fingertips. Everything's a subscription that doesn't actually cost you that much. You can watch movies at home. Right. So why come out? And it's like to come out to 
be in a community listening to things and yeah. experiencing something together that is different than watching your favorite movie on netflix alone it's special right. to be transformed by a group that you went through something with you know i mean there there are things that happen when you even just being in a room breathing the same air at yeah. the same time together it does things to your body and yep. to your mind and it there there is a very communal aspect that i think is missing from entertainment you know and you have to know become, as a magician too that yeah. like people need to be there Right. Yeah. Ber oh, they versus have to. like watching a clip or something. The magic is right. being there to be amazed. Yeah, you don't yeah. You you have to see it live. You have to see it live. The same thing with comedy. It's like I mean, I I love watching Netflix comedy yeah. specials. There's nothing like being in the room. You gotta be there. Yeah. You gotta be Guys, there. get to Dynasty. You Please. gotta be there. That's our new catchphrase. <laughs> gotta be there. You gotta be there. Destination Dynasty. Oh. Mm -hmm. We're also creating a a concept called GOMO. Okay. There's FOMO, the yeah. fear of missing out. At Dynasty, there's the guarantee of missing out. Oh, GOMO. <laughs> GOMO. We got to make a go We've been like needing a GOMO puppet for a long time. Oh, that's um, awesome. We've got contacts, but we just have, we have a blueprint. Really contacts? Yeah. We just need to press the people. gas. I know some puppet people. <laughs> if they're enchanting, send them our way. Right? If they're those dick stars. <laughs> those have dick ass puppets. Cooks. <laughs> cooks by day, puppet makers at night. Fuck them. <laughs> Sorry, you can bleep out the cuss. No, okay. <laughs> great. <laughs> I, um... I'm totally having a mind blank right now because I'm thinking about this puppet cooking. Uh, <laughs> and while you're... Oh, the Swedish chef, our greatest enemy. Oh, he was. <laughs> he was. Oh, you're talking about the, like, the guarantee of missing out. Oh, yes. And, you know, there's a funny thing. Like, if you follow the, the comedy store on Instagram, they, they make the most of, like, hey, Chappelle just showed up, like, after you all left. You yeah. Know? And it's and it's funny when you see that and it's like oh every couple of weeks somebody pops in or this and that and I swear when I told you I was stalking Dynasty and like mm -hmm. following yeah. your Instagram stories it's like every day <laughs> every freaking day some incredible thing happened it's like oh Conan's just here oh, you know that was an exciting moment yeah did you guys like how how long before that did you do you do you often get surprised as well, or do you have to keep secrets and are just like, I think like, oh, we've been what's surprised <laughs> a few times. I think Hannibal Burr showed up. We had no idea yeah, he was coming. Surprise. Oh, wow. Sandler sh showed up. Oh, the first, the first time. time. The first time he the, just dropped in? Well, the, it's even better than that. The first time he dropped in with his kids. Yeah. Because they were driving from dinner. Okay. They were driving past. He was already planning on maybe dropping in the next night. Yeah. He was going to come in maybe and see, like, by himself yeah. to do a drop-in. But this was like, I was driving by with my kids. I thought I'd check it out. We'd give them some candy. they come backstage. And then the show was almost over. There was a show on stage at the time. Yeah. And um, we, we had the host, like act as if he was bringing the lineup out yeah and he just introduced he was like, adam you, sandler yeah. and his kids as... give it up for tonight's uh, lineup and he brought out you know each person yeah. and then <laughs> vanessa and i came out and then he didn't say adam sandler's name yeah. he called him somebody else i don't like somebody that was on the lineup and his oh, two kids and so everyone in the audience was like wait is that what adam is that? sandler yeah. that guy looks a lot yeah. like adam wait did i miss him when he was in the show yeah it was a very confusing i knew i should have gone to the bathroom yeah. man <laughs> <laughs> really fast dropping um but it was just that was such a special fun night yeah we it's it but is conan surprising. like we didn't know i mean obviously we were working with team coco to produce yeah. it and they said oh, yeah. that yeah maybe at some point during like their monthly show like he'll drop in but yeah. it was like his birthday and that day they were like i don't think we even knew until that afternoon that like they're like th we think he's coming that's so fun. I think we got the call sheet and it's not, it's not his name oh, on there. Yeah. I was like, no way. But then he came and he was so gracious and congratulatory. And as we're hanging out in our alley <laughs> next yeah. to the dumpsters, uh, like the most surreal, like our heroes. It's been yeah. really cool. Is it, th there's got to be those moments where you, you know, like you say, you pinch yourself where you're just like, how, how did this thing happen and happen so quick? And there's so much more to go. Like, what do you what do you do in the midst of all this to, you know, keep building, but also to breathe and enjoy it? You know, I think a lot of times people have a great experience like this and then reminisce years later about how great it was, but they get so stressed in the midst of it. I yeah. think we we're really trying. I think I speak for us, but like we are really trying to be in present as much as possible. No, we are. We even talk about it with with staff, too, of yeah. like because. So much of the actual work is happening during the day and mm 
um, million emails and a million logistics to run through right. that like we, when we're there at night, in addition to like making sure everything is going well, we do really try to enjoy it and watch the show. And mm. that's the good reminder of all the emails and all the logistics. It's for something really right. fun. And, and it's helpful that, you know, we're still figuring out how to run a business really. Yeah. Right. But, um, you know, the first couple of months, you know, there was show like one or two shows a week. Um, but we still, you know, we're close to seven nights a week, but, um, and we want to be there ASAP, but it's, it's nice when there's like a random Sunday night where we can just, right. You know, take a breath. Right. Um, and we're, and we, we, when we started this, it was, we communicated very openly about, we want this to work for our lives. Mm -hmm. And we know that the first few years of anything is going to be a lot of work and a lot right. of craziness, but, um, but this is what we want to do. Yeah. And so we, we're trying to pace ourselves um, as best as we can. And and we're trying to build a culture through our staff and through our, our um, audience and our talent of, of really valuing what matters the most in life and, you know, trying to instill these things. That's mm -hmm. what we're excited too about our podcast where we can week to week really be telling these stories and showing our personal growth yeah. and the setbacks and the, the, the victories and talking to everyone else as it's happening. Um, cause this is, this is life. This is, we want this to reflect how we're living. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I don't know if the, the, I landed the, landed it. It's beautiful. That no, I think story? you slid right in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was okay. Then yeah. someone else talk now. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Thanks man. Really cool. Uh, cool. I, I'm just, I'm so encouraged seeing what you guys are doing yeah. and that you're, you know, it's great. Like everyone's got an idea of, oh, I'd love to do this or I'd love to do that. But I feel like you guys have boiled down, okay, if we want it to feel this way, we've got to do these things and you're doing it. And I think even, I mean, even just the one show that I went to the other day and I saw acts that I've seen at the comedy store or at the improv or at UCB and those are all great venues. Mm -hmm. But I felt like these known acts walk in here and they're like, oh, I got to I got to do this a little different. You know what I mean? Like there's, yeah, we there's want a people little to bit of a, even oh, this dress is, up and, you know, right? like, this is like yeah. a thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think, I mean, you, I think that was Nick Kroll's first time. Mm -hmm. oh, was that his first yep. set there? And he's, you know, been in touch with us. He's wanted to check it out. But obviously he's one of the most busy people in the world. Oh, yeah. But it was cool to see him walk on stage and kind of take it all in. And it was just very complimentary on right. stage. And yeah. But I think, yeah, people don't know what to expect. And they're so used to in LA, like there being just so many small rooms that are right. Um, great. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm talking <laughs> shit about small rooms. No, no, no. I, but um, yeah, they have to kind of calibrate to like, oh, there are sconces on the wall. Yeah. And right. people are in theater seats. And, and they're paying attention to me because yes. there's not a table in their right. midst and they're not eating well. And again, that's all. those are all fine experiences. But I think for a performance like, oh, I'm up here being... Right. appreciated and yeah. i need to uh you know meet them at that level yeah mm. yeah well and i think also we're saying too is like obviously we have this vision and we're, we're making it happen but the beauty of it and having gone through this at the west side and the improv too and building the lab there like how quickly community um evolves and grows yeah. and i forgot who said it but like you're like we're like a beacon um, or like a lighthouse that's just shining our light and it's like slowly but surely the people are coming that get it yeah. that want to contribute yeah. um, and so without all of that you know we wouldn't be here <sighs> and people that have donated their time um, and resources just to help make this happen and so yeah. that's that's the, at the core of it is um, community and yeah, I, I have a lot of um experience from groundlings like mm -hmm. being there and it's a different world than the improv or anything like that but i think that there's so much great that can come from a place like that but it also is a place that ultimately is like aspirational until it breaks someone basically it's a cycle right. yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and to to have a place where we're like inviting people at the point where we want to meet them instead of yeah. like dangling things for for our own benefit it's right. like a mutually beneficial relationship and i think that is that feel like you can feel the change of respect in the air mm -hmm. when it's like no matter who you are everyone's kind of on the same playing field yeah and being present with one another right. and being like be, i mean when you talked about presence earlier it stood out to me because 
I feel like everybody's just trying to go somewhere else. Yeah. And if it, it, comedians are like, I'm doing a set here at nine. So at 945, I right. got to be across town here. And it's like, in that moment, in this space, we're all just here. Right. I, w- I was surprised that I didn't think about my phone. You know what Ooh, I mean? Like, nice, yeah. Because as much as like I'm in, I'm all in at a show. It's like, all right, let's do this. But I still get distracted. Right, and I, sure. I seriously was like, oh my gosh, I, don't, I haven't even looked. I haven't even been tempted to you know, grab that rectangle mm. that sits by my leg all day. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's just, um, I, I think it's very unique being in this industry and seeing people who care. And I think that right now, especially. We just need people to care, to care for yeah. one another, but to Amen. also, I feel like there's been so much going on culturally and going mm-hmm. on in entertainment that there, there's been like this grittiness to comedy where people are like, got to, you know, they got to put their, you know, their shell around and protect themselves. Yeah. And I feel like it's like, oh, it's o- it's okay to like have fun and get excited because we've got curtains and lights and yeah. like, you know what I mean? And like actual seats that are comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We get excited by everything. Right. I mean, it's so fun. Like we put in new light bulbs backstage and like a couple of kids have just like, <laughs> look how pretty they are. Yeah. They're cool light bulbs and it changes the way it feels back there. And um, one of the guys that was working with us was like, I had no idea lighting could make such a difference. <laughs> and we're a bunch of grownups just like grinning up at right? these light bulbs. Like, ah, we really made it. <laughs> Uh, we're very excitable. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I mean, uh, so having friends that are uh, primarily stand-ups and then having friends that are primarily magicians, there's whenever you have the same uh when you're the sh- same show with like magicians yeah. and stand-ups, it's like usually magicians are there 4 hours early and right. they got their little box and they're like setting up everything's in a Ziploc baggie yeah. so they don't lose it. And stand-ups are like rolling as you're introducing yep. them and roll out. So I, for me, it's like, oh my gosh, a comedy venue that is like, details are important, mm-hmm. you know, how things feel and how they look, it matters and it, and it adds value to, to the performers as well, you know? For sure. That's rad. You guys are awesome. Uh, You're so, awesome. I'm fanboy. What, a, I'm what a, a sweetie. Oh my gosh. I Major just freaking, sweetie. I, I, I love that you guys are, are doing it. You're really doing it. And it's, it's, I really feel like it's, it's not only going to be a huge success for you guys, but it's going to, I feel like it's going to give a little more passion back to performers who have been grinding and out, just trying to do something and to see other people who are like, oh my gosh, a venue and producers and promoters who care. That's, that's rad. Yeah. Caring is critical. <laughs> A Jamie quote Flan. by Jamie Flatt. <laughs> 2018. <laughs> what What do you want to leave people with? What should we tell them to do? What If you could tell people listening right now, one thing they could do to be a part of what's going on at Dynasty, to join the community, to make a well, difference. We, I mean, we're only a couple weeks into this season, Yeah, our, our summer prototype season. We still have memberships available. The uh, Cordy Club yeah, is yeah. what it's called. And what is, the Cordy Club. Mm-hmm. Oh. And what does that look like? Well, the most... Basic level is a $25 membership that gets you 10% off all shows, mm. invita- invited to special events, and you also get a punch card with rewards. So, And you also get... Oh, and heads up notice when, yeah. we, ha- when we have advance notice of special drop-ins oh, cool. or big show announcements. So I think that's really valuable. Um, and then I think it goes to 100 and that comes with actual tickets yeah. to a show um, or and more. And some swag. And some swag. Uh, but that's the easiest way. And then, I mean, otherwise, you know, just, you know, joining our email list and we really like the experience even for that is important to us. Mm -hmm. And again, as we have more bandwidth, we're going to put even more time into it, but we're trying to add more than just here's our shows, but here's characters and part of our dynasty world. And, (sighs) and like, you know, Vanessa spends a lot of time just like writing, like, here's what happened last week and here's how exciting it was. And I think we want people to connect to that and not just be like another you know, promo email clogging my inbox. So right. sign up for our email list at dynastytypewriter.com. Follow us on Instagram, Dynasty Typewriter. And just remember that people are worth something and stories are good and passion is good. And I think it's all undeniable when people are passionate and loving. Hmm. And that's so cheesy, but I think it's that's so needed. true. It's yeah. Desperately needed. Yeah. It's a crummy, so much crummy stuff going on right now, like deeply horrible things happening everywhere. And I do feel like it's a real privilege to have a stage to put good things on mm-hmm. and to um, use that as a, a 
voice for good things. So it's exciting to have comedy where people can be silly right. and dumb yeah. and vulnerable and all the things because it's the the climate is truly sad. And um that doesn't that's when stories are more important than ever. So it's good. Yeah. And maybe to full circle it idea of enchantment, like this idea of A, just taking people to a different world, but remembering you know, the world is still enchanting. And right. when you just take a moment to remember everything around us is insane. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and there's so much more out there than we know. And just to not get stuck in your own head. But look, trees. Yeah, yeah. and these are crazy. Comes right. from, like the earth grows things I can eat right. just that taste good to my weird body. It's crazy. And then animals? Animals. Right? Little creatures <laughs> everywhere. the world and people have them as pets. Like this right. is my animal who I have forged right. a connection with. And there's an ocean and space? Yes, right? space. Don't even yeah. start on just, space. We are barely just, tethered to reality. <laughs> right. So to Flying kind of enjoy the, the ride instead of focusing on your shitty traffic when it's like, <sighs> well, yes, but also look, there's a worm and he might be friends <laughs> with another worm. <laughs> like they might care about each other. We don't know. I think this is a first <laughs> that, in all of our that, right? years. Worm friends, right? <laughs> rat sticks and worm friends. Well, we know that rats are friends, but... <laughs> yeah. Or rat sticks. Rat sticks. Oh. Yeah, we've mm. been making... Oh, we have a lot of rat fun sticks? with the marquee. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You can see that if you follow us on Instagram, but we... We have a marquee and we don't use it responsibly. Right now, <laughs> right now, one side of our marquee says, for no reason, turkey bacon blasters are back. Limit 15 per customer. <laughs> um, and we have lots of uh, brainstorming threads about like, this could be a good thing to put up on the marquee that we could be used for advertising, but instead, topless bingo, like just whatever we want to do. Possibilities are right, endless. endless. Well, this Guys. has been, uh, that, and that's the dynasty difference. <laughs> <laughs> the world is magic and you guys are making it more magical as and are you magic. oh please yeah. you're 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 shining your light <laughs> you got a, a, a twinkle. play like oh my twinkle goodness. childlike uh Great skin <laughs> whatever you're using Fresh cut. i'd like Welcome to buy to affirmations for taylor <laughs> really nice uh, uh the target shirts. shirt it's a target shirt it's working oh, uh, a guy on plaid <laughs> plaid plaid Guys, go check out Dynasty. I'll put a link here in the show notes so they can go. Is there a link I can put that where they could go sign up to join the club and to be a member? Oh, there member? is. I'll send it to you. Awesome. Well, I'm going to click on the link first. I'm joining the club. I'm all in. Yay! I am so freaking grateful that you guys are here on the planet at the same time. How wild is that that we get to do this? Yeah, and we're humans talking to each other. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, crazy. With language. Right. And oh, look, there's a, an elephant teapot. I know. I've been playing with it. A I lot. know. It's very, I love, I love it's, watching you it's, gently his touch tail, it. His tail is the handle, and the, his trunk is the spout. It's, it's unfortunate, really. His tail goes right back into his body. <laughs> right? That would be so claustrophobic. Right. And the this, tail that reconnects to my right. leg. You oh. forget where, what end is the end? Yeah, um, exactly. It's well, got an elephant centipede vibe. I Let's know. talk about the elephant in the right. room. <laughs> it's this one. We just talked about it, guys. That's how we vulnerable yeah. we were. We've done the thing. That, oh. that, there's Diala another. and Mbali. Oh. <laughs> no, that's not even Diala. Yeah, Diala is somewhere that, else. That elephant is looking <laughs> upset that we're giving all the attention I know. to this what elephant. Yeah. I've never once thought about it. I have two ceramic right. elephants. And that one is like just stuck staring at this one getting <laughs> played with all day. <laughs> with a little uh, circle right. mouth. Now I want to go over there and check out what's going on with that one's tail. Does that have a tail? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it broke off. Oh. And this trunk has been glued on. Someone loves this very much. Did very, you make that? Much. I did not make it. <laughs> did you buy that? <laughs> My grandma collects elephants, and oh. um, I've inherited many. Congrats. I think this is going to work its way into the Dynasty story. I it's be think part of the it will. Here. Guys, go check out Dynasty. I'm going to turn this off. We can keep chatting. You guys are amazing. Bless your heart. Thank you. All of your heart. <laughs> <laughs>